Hello. Why am I? Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. I, I don't know why I'm so down here today. Uh, wait. Eh? No. Actually, it's not that bad. Then you just need to fix the position. Hello, Yuki. I'm doing fine. Let me fix my position here. I'm short can I mean I am short. According to lore, I am like uh one one meter and sixteen uh, centimeters or something. I don't know how much that is in 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 like the other uh metric system, but yeah. I am short short. Not 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 extra short, but short short, yeah. Hello by the way, hope you're doing fine. Um, today, since uh, I, I'm gonna say one foot, I'm not extra small. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not this, okay? This isn't me. I am just slightly taller than this. Okay, now. Uh, there we go. Uh, anyway, I changed the position of webcam. I think I do not have a sleepy eye anymore. Uh, maybe, maybe if I have, it's like less. Yeah, definitely less. I changed the position from on the monitor from like below or something like, like a desk level. And I think it's working better than the last time. Even the, even the, 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 the tracking is better. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad with the result. Can I, can I move please a bit? Wait, give me a second. Don't mind me the setting. Okay, why am I so to the left though? I think I think I need to change position. It should be like more here. But anyway, um, today we are gonna do a lower reading stream. What is lower reading? Well, basically, uh, was suggested by Misa as a goal for the um, how you call it the donation uh, goal. Like uh, I think it was like seventy five or hundred. I don't remember now. But uh, we reached the goal uh, through follows, subs, and uh, donations a bit, and I'm I'm happy. So we will gonna have a, a little reading now. I'm gonna read the first two chapters. It's gonna last a bit because I have written a lot. Like I'm dedicating some 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 streamers dedicate uh, not that much time to lore, but I I I want to write my own story. So. Inner math pad. Uh, but yeah, uh, the problem is I have like six chapters ready. Every chapter is like eight pages long. I'm writing a lot because I, 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 I like all my characters. I like the, the world I'm building. Um, but not really the world, but like the rules that I command it. I really like them. I really like uh, how it's coming out. I'm like expanding even though it's like years and years old so yeah i think we might wait for a bit more people to come in because i you know when you plan something a bit you want some more people to be in there <laughs> it's not the first time i've been there unfortunately but i'm pretty sure uh some people are busy people are doing something else uh and honestly i appreciate the idea of misa saying like lore is fun to read on stream my story is pretty tragic. Like <laughs> my story is ninety percent uh, sadness and some jokes in there, but my character is pretty sad. Let's say. So let me position my webcam better as well. This maybe. I just eh. Don't mind me doing weird movements. Okay, should be better now. But anyway, how are you doing, uh, Yuki? We'll be doing fine. I'm also gonna play my character's team because apparently I have a team. Not really apparently, but like it's been like something that was made uh, almost a decade ago at this point. I, I, I can't believe it was so long ago. If I think about it, I'm like old, like very old. Pull out some things in the meantime. 
Okay. Uh, we have been streaming for like 15 minutes. I think I'm going to switch. And there we go. I'm big. I'm way too big. Make it, make, let, let me make myself smaller. And there we go. If I press F4, it's going to ruin something. Not necessarily. Okay, fine. No, I'm too small now. <laughs> I mean, actually, it's not that bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to stay like this. So you can read everything properly. Uh, this this scene I don't use this scene often, so it's a bit scuff, but it's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, if you don't know what I am, by the way, I am a zodiac, which is basically a creature born from uh, a you know like I'm Scorpio, so it's basically a zodiac sign uh, turned humanoid. As a base, uh, uh, the actual sign in the world representation was uh, used. So, like, I actually come from a scorpion, which was in the desert. In the desert, and then everything else goes after it. But yeah, okay. I should. I could put this as well. Chapter one from the frying pan. Well, more like from the frying pan. Dot, dot, dot. Heat, sand, sun. For kilometers and kilometers. In the sand, a neck hatches. It's small, lonely. It's a small, lonely, dark red scorpion. In a very small inlet where the sun does not reach. Struggling to stay on her feet, the scorpion admires the surroundings of an unknown world. Or world unknown, it's, it's fine. Feeling her instincts, she starts scouting for food and water, as any normal scorpion does. As time passes... Nope. I'm not going to use this music. Okay, this is way better. As time passes, she grows, she grows and gets stronger, and starts to feel the loneliness of the desert. Killing small animals and insects, insects feels just right. Just as an instinct... Oh my god, I can't talk today. <laughs> Give me a second. I need to, you know, wake up my tongue or something. I haven't, I haven't spoken anything all day. But at the same time, hearing the screeching of her victims as they get eaten alive and torn apart while poison fills the innards makes her uncomfortable, as if she feels sadness towards the unfortunate fellas. A very empathic animal, apparently. I don't know if scorpions are empathic or something, but uh, she is. She is. Unfortunately for her, she is. She wants someone to stay with. As she starts to have these thoughts, a far, intense sound start, starts to call her. It sounded like a mating call from other scorpions. Hoping to find someone willing to share the burden called nature, she starts, to, she starts venturing towards the call. Through heat and slippery sand hills, she struggles to survive as she decides to rush there to abandon loneliness forever. Hoping to find someone willing to share the burden called need. Uh, I already read that one. Sorry, I'm reading chat from time to time. I, I don't want to miss uh, like messages and stuff. Reach the place where the sound was coming from. She finds a cave, but it's been quite a traversal. It's rush, sun, and starvation is getting the best of her. Are getting the best of her. I'm probably gonna fix this once I move uh, site from posting these because I've been using Blogspot and it's kind of bad. <laughs> like I, 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 I've been struggling to use Blogspot a lot. It's not the best. Okay, okay. If you have any questions or something, like comments to do, of course, feel free to do so. We have uh, at least three hours to go through all of this and another one. So. We can have a chit chat from you in, uh, in and there, you know. It was not worth the rush, nor the effort either. No, the scorpion was there. How old? Uh, uh, 
almost defeated, she starts to scout for some water or food just right outside the cave entrance until she starts to hear that sound again, almost booming in her ears. Doubtful, she starts venturing inside once again. Finding some small bugs here and there, she slowly gains some strength until she reaches the end of it. Empty, as expected. Only a small light is there, highlighting these tall, decorated rocks that stand as high as the roof of this place. She gives up. No one will keep her company. That's a Scorpio's nature, after all. You know what? I can pull something out. Give me a second. I think it's time to pull out the, the theme. I'm probably gonna change it later, but for now. This, the, the music you're listening right now was made like in 2015 by a person which I have no contacts anymore. Uh, not because I didn't like them, but just it happened, like life happens. And uh, they were they had a lot of free time, they were practicing a lot of things they wanted to uh, improve on. And one thing was music. And she said, can I, can I make uh, uh, you a theme? I'm like, sure. And I kept it. Hello, Misa. Have a break to catch some of this. You, you, you arrived as soon as I started playing uh, the the my very old uh, music theme. Hope you're doing fine, Misa. By the way, hope work is not stressful today. Hello. It's, it's hard to make the, the smiley face with the new webcam setting, but anyway. As she rests in the dim light that pierces the, black, the pitch black dark during the night, the, that pierces that bl pitch black dark during the night, yeah, she, she needs a cave right now, something happens. A strong voice starts to speak. It was incomprehensible. It was not a scorpion, so she was not understanding a word from it, until the dim light starts getting brighter and bright, brighter, almost blinding the poor creature that is slowly getting eaten by it. Some time seems to have passed. The scorpion wakes up, trying to stand on her feet, thinking it was just, just a bad dream, but struggles to stand up. Feels like she got less legs than usual, and the pinches are gone, now replaced with weird, weak, flexible, and multiple meat sticks. And the dark armor she was wearing, gone. Only bare skin is protecting this creature now, which is totally feeling the cold of the night in the desert. Extremely confused, she struggles to stay warm. The best, thing she, the best thing she can do is once again stay in the dim light, all curled up as a ball, hoping for that voice to come back and end this nightmare. And it returned. Now understandable by the used to be a scorpion. Now understandable by the used to be a scorpion lady. The voice speaks. You are the first of your kind to have, to have longed so much for a partner. You are a special one. We will take care of you. Actually, with a, with a, imagine that with a booming voice. For the first time, she felt the warmth of a hot embrace, almost similar to what we could inter interpret as a hug. It was nice. Finally, someone will ease the burden of being alone. Or so she thought. She finds herself in what looks like a plane with green sticks instead of sand. And the heat is bearable. Looking around, she found a big structure with holes. No, they are made of glass panels. And, the, and there looks like to be an entrance. Small common notions are slowly getting in her head, as she's now smarter than before. She starts venturing in, and she finds a place that some will call home. But more, the more she looked around, the more she was feeling, still feeling lonely. No one was around, and the voice was silent. As she reaches the roof, there's a balcony. Melancholy, melancholically, I think that's the word. She places her arm on the metallic handrail and lowers her head. What is happening? Why is she there? Where is this place? Who is she now? As, as she's getting frustrated, she raises her head and notices something in the distance. A big mass of buildings. A city. A place where creatures live together in harmony. Well, depends. Hello. You guys didn't hear how loud that thing was. I didn't 
turn on anything. But yeah, uh, thank you so much, the cartoon legend, for the follow. It was so loud. Let me let me lower the volume of Vinyan. Jesus Christ, that was so loud. Thank you so much for the follow, by the way. Much appreciated. I am I am uh, actually currently lower reading my my, my story. Uh, it was loud. It you, you guys heard it. If you guys heard it, I'm so sorry. I I don't I didn't even know how to turn it on. Like I I remember I I turned it off, but yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for the follow. Much appreciated. I'm currently reading my lore, uh, which is long. Very long. Running in stuff. Oh, man, yeah, that, that was the, the the alert. Technically, the alert is not that loud. I'm going to lower it a, a little bit. Uh, uh, but uh, the sound of stuff getting thrown at my face, that was very loud. That, that was almost... Deafened me for a split second. It was, like, it was so loud. Uh, but yeah, because uh, I, I, I like it has like feature like tits features incorporated in Vinyan, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, back to lore. Uh, as she's getting frustrated, she's uh, no, 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 not the city. Okay, she she decides to get dressed. She remembers how she looked like before, and since she's still not used to her new tr new self, yeah, she decides to wear something that reminds her of her old armor, a black sweater. Uh, wait, I lost it because I was uh, <laughs> distracted. A black sweater and a pair of shorts, but something was missing, and she did not realize until now. Her tail. Being always on her back, it's reasonable she could not see it and did not realize she was not feeling it anymore. What could replace a tail? A long clothed waist belt. There is, a, there is one that is just in, of the right length and she tightens it firmly around her hips. Time to go. As she rushes to the main entrance at the bottom floor, she trips in the waist belt, rolling down the stairs. She's perfectly fine though. No one was hurt in this process. Maybe it's not a good idea to have such a long, uncontrollable piece of clothing around. Uh, but it makes her feel comfortable with herself. This whole situation is so. It is this whole situation is so unreal. Having something to hang on to helps just enough. Then she realizes this race uses these pieces of cloth as scarves. Again, basic notions, slowly finding their way in, as if someone's slowly giving her information. What is the voice? Was it the voice? Or is this? Or is it this place? Or even more, is it this body? You might hear a bike, I'm sorry. She tries to wrap the scarf around her neck, and apparently she was right. It fits perfectly. It is long, but at the same time, it does not reach the ground, so it will not get in her feet's way again. Having it there, so close to, to her sight, will always remind her what she truly is, or was. But no more time to mess around with the dress code. Time to go out and see the city's, and see if the city is real. And it was. After a short walk, she started to see moving cars going in and out of it. People jogging and walking their pets too. So many creatures living together, not trying to murder each other for survival. It was finally peace. She starts walking around the main road, humming, smiling, and shaking her head like a metronome. You know? Like this? Or, well, close to it. She was looking around shops, restaurants, and all of the kinds of stores and places. She walks in a bookstore randomly, and by looking around, she sees, she sees a book with an interesting title, and starts reading it in public. For quite a while. So much that the cashier approaches her, asking to buy the book before reading it. At the moment, the concept of money enters her head, and as soon as she realizes it, she also understands that she did not bring any income with her. Extremely sorry, she starts panicking and tries to find a way to apologize, until another young lady approaches the two. How much is it? The lady asks, taking the book from the ex-scorpion's hand. I'll pay for it. Knowledge and creativity should be expended without modern worries. As she paid an exit, our once creature realizes that the lady had another group of friends outside waiting for her. 
And they all look the same age as our unnamed protagonist. You look okay. you look okay. I wanted to help you. We are we are doing we are we are doing our I mean, is it English? We are doing our summer break. We are in the middle of our summer break. And we're just gonna go downtown. You want to join us? She was feverish, just thinking about it. Having people around to actually interact with her, so she accepted without thinking about it too much. Good, I'm Rika. What's your name? The concept of name struck her mind the fastest so far. She does not have one. Never had one. What should she do? I don't have one. She said, but slightly looking away in shame, but mostly to cover her blushing. You don't have one? Well, we're gonna choose it, choose it for you then. I don't have any ideas of as of now, but maybe by hanging around we'll find something. Her eyes flashed, touched by so much kindness. She starts to follow Rika and her group of friends as she slowly starts to understand herself more and more. She enjoys the music. She finds, she, like, she starts to find, like, things that she, she enjoys. Uh, she enjoys music, the piano specifically, reading books, chill times. As time passes, she starts to gain more and more knowledge about the world and to appreciate living as a human. They reach the central roundabout of the city, filled with big screens, billboards, lights, and a large monument in the middle, a big vertical stone slab. What is this? She asks Trika. This is called the Holy Monolith. It's written in an ancient lost language, but it is said that it comes from the eastern deserts and, it's, and it belonged to a forgotten civilization. But if you ask me, it's just a rumor and this is the prankster's work. No way this from the from the desert. She looked fascinated by it. Like... She swore she could feel the desert, the, desert, the desert heat coming from it. It does come from the desert. It does come from the desert. I already saw this already. I saw this already. She remembers it from the moment she turned into a human. It's, it's similar to one of those stone pillars. Wait, you sure? I don't know anything about it. I just remember seeing it once. I can't really help much, I'm afraid. Eh, don't worry about it. It's weird, though. You don't remember your name, but you remember this big table? You are a weird one. That's it. What do you think about Relith? Relith? It's a mix of the word, words relax and monolith. You're pretty chill, and it looks like you're connected to this lab, so... Your name shall be the mix of these two. Hmm, I don't know. We can change it any time. But for now, you're Relith. Deal, it, deal with it and let's go. She didn't mind too much. She was not enthusiastic about it either. It was okay for the time being. Yeah, she is named Relith. It's not Zodiac. Zodiac is the race. And the, 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 the you know, the whole... Uh, um, for now, it's the title of my story as well. Which is also my, my name, but... It's uh, it's it's all a whole big work in progress still. I think I have ideas for the main title, but I want to get a bit more deep in the story before deciding it. As they kept walking, one of the friends stops the group. Oh, I forgot I wanted to go in there, pointing at a pet store on the other side of the road. Reddith saw people with pets already. She was not expecting anything in particular, but she was curious nonetheless. So, of course, she followed the group. Inside... There were not just cats and dogs, but also parrots, snakes, and even more even more exotic animals she does not even know. Who I want this one, the friend said, pointing at a big corgi uh, cub. My mother's gonna be mad, but I don't care. You are coming home with me. What about you, Red? You live alone, right? Rick asked. Oh, I think so. No one was at home. I'll pick one, uh, pick one then. I'll pay for it. Hello, Chip. I, 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 how are you doing? I, I, I am, I am Zodiac, yes. I, I am, I am Zodiac. I am reading my own story, with technically my my whole theme, musical theme in the background. I think I'm gonna change it soon though, because it's a bit repetitive. Pick one then. I will pay for it. What? No, I. Ah, uh, 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 no, no. Accept my kindness, or we can be pet buddies. 
Basically forced to pick one, Relith scouted the shop for a while looking for something simple and possibly not as expensive until... Erika? I found it. Oh great! What is it? A cat? A dog? Anything in between? This one. A small, old looking black scorpion in a lonely display case among others. As they noticed it, the owner, this grumpy old man, approaches them. Uh, finally someone interested in this old boy. It's been here since he was the smallest scorpion I've ever seen. It's been such a pain to deal with and no one was ever interested in it. If you want to get it away from here, I will give you a discount. I... I want him. Of course, she's a scorpion. She's gonna be attracted to scorpions, you know. It's just, it's just basic, basic uh, instincts, I guess. And also, I wanted to include the scorpion thing. Are you sure? There are so many other choices. He looks lonely. A bit of silence between the two. Like she's saying, is some, you know, the, the dog and the cat and yeah. Even you know, a parrot, you know, a parrot can talk. A parrot can talk, a parrot can, can, can you know, give, give you the... You're deeply terrified of Scorpio. But you're a Scorpio. How can you? How can you be terrified of, of your own self, you know? Please. <sighs> Whatever plots you're about, I am okay with it. Hey, old man, we'll take this thingy boy. They're scary. I mean, they are scary. And they're also very deadly. But just, uh, you know... If you grew up as a scorpion, because she grew up as a scorpion, you're not going to be terrified by them. You're going to be... you embrace them. They both go to the counter to pay, as Relit peeks in the display case, smiling. Oh, no, God. How can I, how can I smile without closing my eyes? God damn it. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay. So, should I call you Scarlet now? Excuse me. First, I thought relax was a good word to represent you, but after this, I'm not sure. Should we switch to Scarlet? You know, Scorpion and Monolith? No, please, no. Fun fact this was not an actual name that I thought about her. Like, never. I, I thought it was a good joke, though. As they exit the store, Relith approaches Rika. Thank you. For what? she asks. He looks sad. He's been alone his own, all of his life. And he does not look like he's gonna, he's gonna last, last, last much longer. I want to stay close to him before he's gone. She's a kind. She's kind. She's a, she, she, she be caring. For now. Rika gets emotional listening to Reddit's speech. As she tries to hold the tears, she hugs her new friend. I'm sorry I did not understand you at first. I'm glad to have become your friend. Me too, Rika. Me too. As more time passes, the moment to say goodbye arrives. Arrives. Goodbye, Ralith. It was a pleasure spending time to, uh, spending today with you. Don't be a stranger, okay? And treat your new buddy well. Uh, don't worry, I will. See you tomorrow, Rika. Have a great night. Ralith comes back home as she left. Ralith comes back home as she left, giggling and humming, while occasionally dropping a glance at her new buddy. You're gonna like your new home. It has a lot of comfort, and I'm sure we'll figure something out of, of you for you too. She said while get while hitting the display case gently and smiling. You know, like when you when you tap a uh, a case or something. Hello, then. We'll be leading, reading my lore. You are about to witness one of the most terrifying moments ever. She basically uh, arrived at her new home uh, with a bit of you know mess. Uh, how you call it? Messy brain, confused and whatever. Found a friend. The friend bought her a scorpion pet. And now we are gonna we're gonna get to very tragic moment. Um, as they arrive at the beginning of the home's property, the scorpion st starts to move around nervously. You okay, buddy? We're almost there. Don't worry. Look, that's the house. As Relith raised the display case at her high level, she was showing the house from the distance of the garden. Uh, of the garden to the scorpion. But what we, she witnessed was the most unexpected horror. As she was approaching her home with the display case in sight, 
she literally saw the small scorpion slowly fade into extreme thin dust that slowly faded away from existence. She was paralyzed. She had to take a moment to realize what just happened. But what happened, really? Why did it disappear? Did it die? Did it die? Was it something she did? Destroyed from the unexpected tragedy, she slowly enters her home and heads straight to bed, with her head buried in the pillow, crying until she falls asleep. I told you this was gonna be a sad fucking story, okay? It was gonna be a desperate. We're just at the beginning of it. Like, this is just the, 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 the tip of the iceberg, goddammit. Ah. So, so it's a peak. This is not sad, this is fucking tragic. Like, th this is one of, probably... I don't think it's one of the saddest story I've ever read or, like, written myself, but... This is pretty tragic. And also, I have a sleepy eye still. I think it's just me being me at this point. <laughs> He's a yander. <laughs> okay. She fell asleep. So now we go to the, to the day after this. The next, the next morning, she decided to go to the city once more. Uh, I'm sorry. She wanted to meet with Rika and the others to distract herself from what happened yesterday. Sing the eyes together and it will be fine. I tried. The problem is uh, I'm using Vinyan. I don't I don't know if Vinyan actually has something for it. I don't I don't know if there is like a way to sync the eyes. And I even improved the, the tracking now because I'm I moved the, the webcam. Like I I can make custom anim custom stuff with Vinyan. Like I have Teeth Incorporate, for example. Or I can set some animations and stuff. The problem is uh I think it's kind of limited when it comes to uh, some features, but it's also way lighter in performance. Like I could play, I could play Tekken Seven almost perfectly yesterday, well the other day. So it's way lighter than VC Face, and also allows for more flexible movement. But yeah, this DPI is annoying me. Like I should be looking this way for like constantly. I should get like a stand for my webcam that basically has the same height as my face. Which is something that I might invest into if I really want to get if I if I get the model. If I don't, I'm just gonna, you know, keep it like this. Because I'm, I'm gonna be you know occasionally using it, not not really uh I I'm I'm not gonna be VTuber hundred percent. I'm gonna I'm gonna be myself and VTubing at the same time, mostly for collabs. I think that's a good idea, you know, using the model for collabs, uh, collab streams. Having a good standard placement will help, yeah. Yeah, I need, I need to get one, or or, or find a, a working solution or get a, an actual one, an actual uh, stand for it. I, I, don't, I have no idea how they look like even. So I, I need to look into it. And I, I will uh, after I... after September probably. Okay. As, as she approaches the city, she could not think of anything else. So that, that is like, no, 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 I, I, I really tried. It's not the lighting. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm clearly uh, illuminated right now. I even tried with the, um, we, with, with the, with light. Like, I, I can try it now, right now. I'm going to turn on my phone uh, uh, torch. Yeah, it's still a bit lazy. It's just the... Um, it's just the, the position. It's the position of it. I even blinded myself with... God damn it. Okay. Anyway. As she approaches the city, she could not think of anything else. Why did, did this happen? Was it a fake setup from the shopkeeper? I mean, she's just thinking random things. Like, she doesn't... Of course, it was not a fake, it was a real scorpion, but she's just thinking from, you know, utter confusion. Was it that hold to just disappear as dust? 
she needed answers. She's pretty dumb, okay? She, she's silly, she's silly. She goes into the bookstore just like the day before and notices the book she got yesterday was back on the shelf. Probably a very requested one, she thought. After a while, Rika and her group enter the bookstore and Lilith waves her hand high to be noticed, but she seems to not react. Maybe she did not see clearly. Lilith tried to approach her, tries to approach her. Hey Rika, hello. How are you doing today? Oh, uh, fine, I guess. Hello! What a great day! Exactly. She, she, that's the approach. Ouch. Thank God I lowered the thing because it was going to break my ears again. Hello, Leona. I'm going to drink. Okay. Hope you're doing fine. Welcome in. We are just low reading. We, we, we just witnessed a horror. But yeah. Maybe we'll witness another one in time. Oh, nice. Witness or nice. <laughs> Hope you're doing fine, by the way. Okay. Uh, oh, um, fine, I guess? Hmm? What's wrong? I don't know. You tell me. Who are you? What? I I'm Relith. Who? A friend of, of yours. You called me Relith yesterday. I swear I don't know what you're talking about. I am pretty sure I, I will never choose a name that's as stupid as Relith. What does that even mean? Sorry, I uh, must have mistaken you for someone else. Have a good day. Relith slowly exits the store, even more confused than when she... Than when she entered, <laughs> biggest of bra. <laughs> exactly. Did she not remember her? It was just the day before. It's impossible she forgot about her. Maybe. I know what's happening. I will follow them. Relith waits outside of the bookstore for Rika's group to exit and see where they're gonna go and confirm her theory. As the party exits, they start heading to the central roundabout of the city. What is this? One of the members of the group asked. This is called the Holy Monolith. It's written by in an ancient lost language, but it is said that it comes from the east eastern deserts and it belonged to a forgotten civilization. But if you ask me, this is just a rumor and this is just a prankster, prankster, prankster's work. No way this arrived from the desert. The exact same line from yesterday, right in front of the monument. The book back in its place, Rika enter in the bookstore, then heading to the center roundabout. It could not be a coincidence. Shortly after, they went to the pet store. Oh, I forgot I wanted to go in there. Oh, I want this one, the friend said, pointing at a big corgi cub. My mother's gonna be mad, but I don't care. You are coming home with me. Just like yesterday. Another thing will confirm her theory. Redith enters the pet store and rushes to see if he was still there. And he was. Alone in that display case. A small little dark scorpion. Dark old scorpion. He's still fine. You're alive. Oh, thank goodness. Ah, finally someone interested in this old boy. He's been here since he was... I'm sorry, not a burp. Blaith notices the repeated dialogue once again. And before the shopkeeper could finish his sentence, she decides she has to test another thing. Old man, is there a mirror in here? Uh, yeah, and it's in the bathroom. Hey, who you called old? She runs to see. She runs in to see herself. Pale skin, red. Oh, I mean pale. Yeah, pale skin, pale skin. Red hair, right side longer than the other, and her left eye was pure gray, while a right, uh, a right one was blue. The peculiar silhouette as pupil. With slight disbelief, she gets to her senses really fast and rushes out of the store, grabbing Rika's arm and pulling her. I need you for some so something. Don't worry, it won't take long. I'm sorry, girls. I will I will bring her back, I promise you. Wait, where are we going? Rika! Some time passes. After a quiet walk, they exit the big city and Rika manages to break free. Let me go! What do you want from me? 
Rika. Yeah, that is my name. I, I don't know how you know it or why you are so obsessed with, obsessed with me, but what do I look like to you? Huh? Tell me. Describe me. What do I look like? Uh, what is this? Uh, you look like an ordinary girl, brown hair, brown eyes, normal clothes. Why am I even answering you? I see. What happened yesterday? We met, remember? We talked at the monolith. You brought me a book and a pet. You bought me a book and a pet. And you cried on my shoulder. I assure you nothing of this ever happened. I never saw you until today and you're giving me a headache. I see. I will ask you another thing then. That it slowly approaches Rika and hugs her. Wait, what are you... I need you... I need to ask you a favor. As a friend. Followed me to my house. I swear, you'll be home before tomorrow. I am... Okay, fine. I will leave as soon as possible, though. You will. I promise. They reached the exact spot before the Scorpion faded away the day before. This is it. This is where I live. Radith takes a step forward, a few steps forward, then turns around. Rika, I'm sorry, but you need to take a few more steps. Huh? Did I work it out already? I don't know what's gonna happen, but I promise you'll be fine. You just have to trust me. <sighs> yeah, right. I mean, what's going to happen if I take a couple steps forward? As soon as she begins to walk, her feet start to disappear, making her fall forward. I I'm not gonna scream, I'm not gonna scream. I'm going to interpret it, but I'm not gonna scream for you. Ah! What's happening to me? Where are my feet? What have you done to me? Nothing. Edith starts crying as it happens. I had to test it. I... Ah! My hands too! I'm fading away! Please help me! I don't know how. It happened before, but you'll be fine tomorrow, I promise. Because what is almost fully disintegrated, only her upper body is left steadily degrading. Relith hugs what is left of it, and Azrika screams in agony. I told you it was gonna be extremely, extremely, extremely depressing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we can't be friends. A tear on Relith's cheek is what remains of Rika, and slowly gets mixed with, with Relith's. Very sad moment. I think I'm gonna change the music for for now. Because it's been playing for a while and I'm kinda tired of it. Let me see if I can pull something. I don't have much many I I can Hmm. Hmm. Let me, let me change track because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit annoyed after a while. This one maybe? Not what I wanted. Nope. Nope. This one I know. I want. No. No. This is from the, 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 the my playlist. Maybe this one? I should have organized some music. I'm sorry. Nope. This one? Jesus Christ, no! This one, maybe. Okay, this one is fine. Okay. After all this mess happens, the voice speaks again. The one from the beginning. You made the same mistake twice. Wait. 
I should turn everything on now. Maybe a bit of, you know. Yeah. You made the same mistake twice. You can't bring the living here. This is your cage. My what? As tears stop flowing, Wraith shouts to the sky. We made you into what you are not right now as a test of our powers. We can create lives, morph them, destroy them. Do not disobey us. Let me out of here. I want to be with my friends. As soon as... She, I'm sorry. As soon as she shouts the last sentence, an intense shock fills her entire body. Like being in a lake and gets stricken by lightning. With pain shaking her whole body, she just falls on the ground, struggling to stand up. Know your place, Peck. You are powerless over us. You are here to keep us entertained, not talk back. Not to talk back. Now, enjoy your new life and try not to bore us. Relith crawls in a ball in the middle of the garden and starts crying for all the pain she is enduring. It is very depressing, actually. The more I read it, the more I feel like <laughs> I was a bit too harsh on her. But she is my she is my lady, so I I I can take the you know the the, the, the uh, she he is my my child, and I'm I, she's gonna take whatever I decide she's gonna take. The same day, same bookstore, same book on the shelf, same group of friends entering. Rika is still there. Relith starts... Uh, this music is being loud, though. Okay. That was way better. It was loud in my ears, at least. Relith starts reading the book, and the cashier gets angry as she notices. Rika steps up and says she can pay for the book. But this time, things are a bit different. Thanks for the offer, but I already have this book at home. I just remembered I need I need to finish it. Oh, uh, then never mind. Hey, you look fun and lonely. You want to join us? We are going to go through a lot of stores today. Relith, with a sorrowful, melancholic smile, replies. Don't worry about me. Go ahead. I have business to attend to. Oh, also, pointing out a friend of the group. She wants a koji pop. Make her happy, Rika. Relith read the stores, the store, confusing Rika with that sentence. Relith, Relith goes on with a slow pace, thinking, I will find a way out and break this perpetuous reset. I will free Rika, the little one, the whole city from it. I won't lose hope. I just like I did back then. I promise I will free you all. I am Relith, the Scorpio. My head is cut. Fuck. Uh, let me fix it. Ah. Why am I so on the side as well? Okay. I'm. I, I was saying. Exactly. I'm ready to the Scorpio. And I will face the gods. Wow, I can't. I can't. I, I'm trying my best, I can't. Ah, okay. And this was the first chapter. I technically have another one ready. If you guys are... Oh, wow. Uh, if you guys are still interested in it. As I said, it's a, it's a, long, it's a long read. And it was just one piece of lore. It was just the basic of the of my character story, not even uh how you call it, not even the uh the pinnacle of it. There is no pinnacle, it's not a summary. I'm writing everything down. I'm writing everything down and I don't even know if I'm going to finish it before my lifetime or something. <laughs> Cause I have a, I I personally have a lot of ideas. Wait, I, I can uh, what the uh, okay. Oh, yeah, because I pressed F1, of course. 
Lovely. Lovely. I was saying, uh, I have a lot of ideas for it. Uh, like a lot of world building uh, uh, additions, a lot of characters I want to implement, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, just world building, world building and uh, additional details, additional uh, uh, story elements. I, I want it to be better. I wanted to keep improving it. I, I really like how it's uh, coming along, personally. Even, like, I have a lot of details in my head, but I haven't come to write them down in the actual story as of now. Because I don't, didn't have the occasion, literally story-wise. There is room for discussion and slow additional here and there uh, pieces. But since she is in this place where nothing happens and she's alone, she's not going to understand everything at once. It's going to take a while. Which is why I'm also glad I'm taking my time so I can write it uh, the best I can with it being coherent 100% of the time. Which is not easy. Like, imagine, you know Dark Souls? Dark Souls had a lot of problems with... Uh, uh, consistency because of various reasons. And I think uh, yeah, I will never, of course I will never reach that level of complexity but at the same time I want to be as consistent as possible. So yeah. Chapter 2 What now? Years have passed. How many? We don't know. For certain. But Relith is still there, living the perpetual cycle, the same day over and over. Thank you, Bike, for coming, to, uh, passing through. I have read every book, watched all the series and movies, listened to all the music, yet I still have to find a clue on what to do. Again, loneliness was getting to her and dragging her down. She was stuck once again with no one else but herself. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I thought I would have died long ago, yet I'm still the same. No sign of aging, no illnesses, and thousands of years have gone by. Is this the gods doing? Are they keeping me alive or is it just my nature? I don't know. Nothing talks about a creature with a zodiac sign as an eye. What am I? Frustration and loneliness made her apathetic. Apathic? Whatever. I don't know if I care anymore. Maybe I'll just lay here and wait for something to happen. Even staying still irritates me. I need to find hints. There is, There has to be something, anything, somewhere. But I have no idea where to look now. I wonder where the gods have been. I have not heard them for a long time now. Hello, Salpo. Lore reading. Big, 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 big lore. Yes. This big lore. This is big lore. This is big lore. And basically, you can use me as a podcast while I read, because I that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's uh, I already read chapter one. Now I'm finishing chapter two. Well, basically started chapter two, but anyway. How are you doing, Salvo, by the way? How's work going? Today's, uh, today is Thursday. You're going to... It's uh last day before you rest, technically? Or you need to go to, you know... Doing business trips and stuff. I've not heard of them for uh, I've not heard them for for a long time now since that moment. I still remember that clear as day. I will never forget the pain, those images. This is why I'm I am fighting. But what am I fighting? 
Last day before my break until Friday 19th. Okay. Then 28.30, I am in Honor London. Nice. So you're going to take a break from work? Like a vacation? Well needed, actually. Okay. As she slowly gets back from her memories, a dim light slowly brightens the room, blinding the lady. What is... As it arrived, it was gone, and nothing seemed to have changed. What was that? Never happened something like this in all the time I've been here. I'm not working next week until the end of the week. No, but then I have big trip. And then in October, we have big project. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. <sighs> oh, sorry. God damn it. I, I felt like... I feel EP today. And I get more responsibility from start of October. Oh, God. Okay. I'm gonna be slain. Just don't overdo yourself if you, if you can, please. We need you. <laughs> we all need you. Cocktober. As she turns around, red around trying to check the room, she notices outside of the window a cyan glow coming from below. She goes to check it out and notices a person laying on the ground in the house's garden and they were not vanishing. After the very long stare, Reddit gets back to her senses and rushes down to check on them. As she runs down, her mind is running wild with, wild with thoughts. Who's down there? What is that? How are they not disappearing? No answers were to be found. Only one way to find out. It's the scorpion. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it's a cyan light. I don't I don't know if it's the scorpion. It would, would emit the cyan light. As she approaches the person, it's a human figure, the ghost uh, slowly fades, uh, fades to reveal a slightly tall man with cyan hair, a long sleeveless coat and snow goggles, and appears to be unconscious. Doesn't look like a common human, at least. Uh, what to do? What to do? Uh, Reddit decides to, to drag him in. Maybe let's start to see if he's alive. He places him on the couch and checks his heartbeat, which luckily appears to, to be still present. After that, she goes to prepare a towel with hot water while also preparing something to eat in a rush. Uh, it's something generic will do. Hopefully. A voice spoke from behind her. A uh, salad will suffice. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Huh? London, yeah. Uh, as she hears an unknown voice coming from behind her, she rapidly turns around to see the guy standing right behind her. W what? He asked, seemingly confused by her reaction. You, you were... It's all you, you did not... Why are you up now? Uh, I never passed out. I was just extremely, extremely relaxed and felt sleepy. I noticed you dragging me in, but not knowing you, I wanted to see where this was going. But you were... I was worried. She rubs her head in frustration for a couple of seconds. Uh, okay. First things first. Who are you? And how did you manage to get here? That is a great question. Uh, which one? Who are you? No, no, the other one. I know who I am. Do we, who do you think I am? The newcomer extends his hand for a handshake. Name's Ark, by the way. Pleased to meet you. I think you guys recognize this guy. He is the area sign. He is also part of the banners, and this art was made by Merlin. He's, my, he's the, 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 the Arius boy. He's the, the, literally the second character I made, uh, like, even, like, real story-wise. Like, real-world story-wise. Like, he was made, like, probably the month after Reddit, or something like that. Like, bonk the cheap bag. <laughs> I mean... He's not swole, but he's 
good looking at least, young boy. Okay, I also I want to do a thing while we, you guys embrace the the art. I want to. I think we can go back to the original playlist. Yeah, because now we we are in a slightly less anxious moment. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna work every even all day Friday and Thursday Saturday. I will tra I just travel in and out. When I'm in London for work, I'm always touch and go. Yeah, I mean when you go. For when you travel for work, you usually don't have much time to do anything else. Uh, you're supposed to shake hands when you make acquaintances. Who gave you that name? Yeah, he's named Ark. Like, Ark. <laughs> you don't shake hands. You do. You do something else. <laughs> Oh, myself. I have a very good taste when it comes to names, you know. It took me a while to choose. That's a lame name, she says, as she turns around to continue cooking. Does it have a meaning? Oh, yeah, it does, and it's a deep one. Oh, really? Good to know. Art does not seem to be annoyed by her attitude. He clearly noticed her, the look in her eyes and, and the way she approached him. She's someone who has a lot of struggle happening inside. A deep one, yeah. It's a very, it's a very deep meaning, yeah. You need a hand to make a salad. It's one of the simplest dishes. Ark interrupts her gently, trying to not make her mad. Trying to not to not make her mad, yeah. I can clearly see there's something wrong. In, uh, I can clearly see something is wrong. You're feeling uneasy. Is there anything I can do to help you? Relith turned red in an instant after the sentence. She felt the loneliness, but she, all she understood was embarrassment. Uh, she felt the kindness, sorry. Um, but all she understood was embarrassment and unwillingly denied the truth. She rushes to the preparation of the salad and, and uh, uh, as she starts talking, almost shaking from the confusion. Nothing is wrong here, have your salad. She handles the dish to Ark and quickly leaves the room, taking heavy steps up the stairs, and closes herself into her room, shut, then proceeds to slowly slide on the door to the ground. Like, you know, when you have your back on the, on the door and then slowly slide down on the knees. Sitting with her hands in her hair. Like, yeah, like desperation level. A flow of questions, even unimportant ones, Kept hammering her confused brain. Is he a spy? Did he notice I was trying to find clues about them, the gods? Maybe he's a watchdog. But what if he's a real person? What is he? Why is he so friendly with me? Did he like the salad? <laughs> How should I behave towards him? It's the first time I, someone takes a step in this cage. How can he do it? After some minutes, that felt like hours for the lady, a gentle knock can be heard from outside the room. Hey, are you there? Did I say something wrong? Complete silence. Anyway, I wanted to thank you for the food. It was good, even if it was simple. I enjoyed it. Lalith faintly gasped, probably surprised by to hear such kind words coming from a complete stranger. I thought you were hungry too, so I made you something. It's not much, but I hope... Uh, I lost I lost the point. Uh, okay. But I hope it, it, it tastes good. I'm not a good cook. I'm gonna leave it here just outside the door. I'll try to take a look at the house, since apparently I will be living here from now on. A small clamp was felt in Relith's heart, both as a relief and as a, and as a bad feeling. She will not be lonely anymore, but she will always have this dude around from now on, and still no clue if if she's friend or foe. As soon as she heard footsteps leaving, she slowly unlocked the door and looked outside. Relic, uh, Relic, Ark was still there, looking around, curious, far in the corridor and on the ground, a simple sandwich with ham and salad. He feels genuine. As doubts slowly leave her mind, she grabs the food and takes a bite. Apparently, he tried to cook the bread. 
He slightly burnt it inside and it left a parched taste in her mouth right after the first bite, almost making her want to spit it. But she endured the awful taste to not have any death or credits towards him. After dealing with the dry sandwich, with an additional trip to the closest bathroom to wash her mouth, she goes to look for the Hark in the house. She heard the sound of water coming from another bathroom in the house, and she thought maybe he had, he had to use the restroom. She turned the corner to see the light from the bathroom coming out, with the door wide open. Without really thinking much about it, she approached the door, the door sill and took a peek. What she saw was indescribable. This is why we will skip this the detailed explanation. She saw her, his dick. No. No, no, no. She just saw him turn around with a towel on his crotch. Nothing too extreme here. In pure, in pure embarrassment, she kept looking for a second, turned red once again, screamed and shut the door really fast. Arke got scared and slipped on the ground. Redith ended up sitting on the ground again, just outside the bathroom, in pure awkwardness. They must have sent him here to distract me from my objective. It has to be this, there's no other explanation. Hey, are you okay? What happened? You tell me what happened. Why did you keep the door open? A little bit of privacy would be appreciated, you, would be appreciated, you know? Is that why you screamed? You were closed in your room. I took the occasion to take a shower and make myself comfortable. Didn't think you'd get out so soon. Get dressed already. We need to talk. All right, Jesus. Jeebers. A few minutes later, Ark exits the bathroom, with Relith still sitting there like a guard keeping an eye, like a guard keeping, a guy, keeping an eye on an inmate. Like a prisoner. In the distance, she noticed a detail she missed the first time. Ark has her same eye condition. Has her same eye condition. Heterochromatic eyes with a zodiac sign on the colored one, with his being the Aries sign with cyan eye. While Relith has a right eye with a representative sign, Ark's was the left eye with the right eye being grey and almost empty. So basically the mirrored version of mine. Like the the the, the left eye is colored with the sign, the right eye is grey. Wait. You like me? I wanted to ask you earlier about it. I thought you noticed already and knew something more about it. I don't know. I spent years looking for anything about it, but all my research ended up with nothing at all. Oh. An awkward stare starts between them as they both lose themselves looking into each other's eyes. Oh, they fucking! Huh? Wait. Actually, I do know something. Ark said, slamming his fist in his hand. It just came back to me. Huh? Wait. You really do? Yes, they told me what I am. They told you what? That you're a weird guy? No, that's... Wait! That's rude, that's what it is. Stay on topic. Okay, okay. They told me I'm a Zodiac. Zodiac? Relith High sparkled with interest. It's the first time she heard about a Zodiac. But there is a clear connection between zodiac signs and them. They told me I'm a zodiac, but they did not go into detail. They said gibberish, told me random things, and then I was left alone in this, reset, in this resetting place for quite a while. I did not bother too much to understand it, honestly. I tried, but after a while I was too bored to continue exploring the books and stuff. With a thinking expression, Reddit started walking with her hand on her chin, mumbling to herself. So we are connected to the symbol in our eyes. I wonder. Ark, were you something else before becoming a zodiac? Actually, let me let me ref let, let me say it again with the better tone. Ark, were you something else before becoming a zodiac? Oh yeah, I was a 
it was very vague memory, but I remember I was a ram with big horns and big hooves. I was quite proud. So Zodiacs have an actual connection with the sign. I was a scorpion and he was a ram. Scorpio and Darius. Also, I chose Arius as the second character because Rowling is an Arius. And she was helping me making them. Ark went serious for a second. You think there are many like us? Like, there are, supposed, there are supposedly 12 zodiac signs. So that will make us at least 12 different people. Uh, Redith jumped. Like, she got hit with lightning along with the instant realization. Like, you know, the. the when you get the light bulb uh, thingy. She lived alone, f alone for so long, not knowing anything about herself, she forgot the obvious. If there are at least two zodiacs with two different zodiac signs, it is possible that there will be more zodiacs, as many as the rest of the signs. Schmort. Big brain. Uh, math. Whatever. The slowly, answers were arriving thanks to the arrival of a nice yet goofy guy she never met. Yet she felt a connection with him, with a sense of safety. He might not be the key to solve the mystery and get out of the cycle, but maybe it will make it less tedious. It's a possibility. I wonder if they are in, in the same position. Edith said as she slowly approached the wall to lean against it. Thinking about it wouldn't really help, you know. Huh? If we can't do something about it, there is no need to think about it now. We should focus on ourselves, understand our situation first, then try to find a way to help the others. But for now, we can just chill, take our, take our time. It's not like we're running short of it anyway. Anger flowed in Reddit's heart, but as it came, it was replaced with a sense of relief. Ark was right. They can't help the others if they don't help themselves first. As frustrating as it can be, there's nothing much to do about it. Only time will tell, dog. Only time will tell, she thought. Oh my god. If he's gonna bark again, I'm gonna close the window. It's not mine, by the way. It's the, 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 it's the neighbors. They left. They leave him outside the, the house, the guy in, in the garden, for hours. Poor guy. I'm Relith. Excuse me. My name. You told me yours, but I never told you mine. It's Relith. Oh, then. Uh, Ark extends his hand for a handshake once again. I'm Ark. Nice to meet you. Relith reaches for the hand and shakes it, without showing a glimpse of emotion, if not a hint of blush. Hope we'll get along, Ark says with a, as he smiles. Yeah. Relith nods. And that's the end of the second chapter. Blush. Yeah, she blush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she... She's a bit... Uh, tsum tsum, you know? She... she, she... She doesn't want to show the, the emotions. She she's just uh she she when you show her appreciation after you know a long time alone, she, you want to it's a hard time to you know express yourself. Even show it to the others. So she 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 beats Sundere. A little bit, not that much. As long as it's not Yandere, it's fine. Uh technically I'm done with the content for today. <laughs> We we did the uh, we did what I was I planned. I I could go on and read more. Like I have no problem, but it depends if you guys are up to it. Like I can I can go on. I I like reading my own stuff. I also need helps me like re uh, remember what I wrote because these things, like these the earlier chapter was made in uh, in January, while this one was made in May, like it. I, 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 it's, there's a long gap between uh, chapters because I, I am uh, uh, like I I think about them. I don't really write them immediately, and I slowly process all the possible ideas and situations. 
and then I go on and write it, which is, you know, not really ideal if I want to write the whole story, but, you know, it is what it is. We also get the first picture here of her. You can, I think you can guess whose art style is this one. Dog, please shut up. I think we can, we can kind of get uh, an idea of the uh, art style here. It is Leiru, yeah. Best boy, indeed. Later is also working on a thing. Wait, I, I can show you. You know what? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show the thing. Uh, I need to get the chat going. Where is it? There we go. I need to save the image. Give me a second. Let's save on the desktop. Now. Dog. Okay, I need to go and grab it. Okay, I can see anything else. Ah, okay. Leiru is working on this. It's so big. It's the first time I'm showing it. When I have an actual reference sheet, finally. He is. Uh, he actually went a bit overboard with this. Like I, he he made a lot of uh, references. He also made the 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 back without the scarf. He made the, the back to clearly show how the hair is supposed to look like. And uh, and everything because I noticed a lot of people uh, mistake her hairstyle, which is understandable. Like not having a reference is. Uh, quite a problem. Even even this model is not great. Like I know Merlin made it really fast. It it has like a, a bang here, which is slightly longer than the others, but it's not. Um, it's not the same hairstyle, like whatsoever. And I hope to kind of fix the thing when people make art of her, because you know, I care. She is my she is my child after all. She is my baby boy. My baby, baby, baby boy, baby lady. She is my baby lady, and, and I, I don't want anything to happen to her. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna take a small pee pee break. So enjoy my clips for a while. I'll be right back. Salute! <laughs> Quanto forte! The best possible. So, please, big thank you to everyone who fucking stopped by for so long. And to celebrate this, we also got fan art of the tournament. Yes. <laughs> I was saying. Yes, fan art of the tournament. I'm <laughs> sorry. Is it gonna... White people pussy. Okay. <laughs> you you know what you just remind right, remind me of? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to explain it. I, I need to oh. We won! We won! Yay! We won! Yay! 
No! No, 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 ok. No. I told you, I told you there was something, 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 I told you, <laughs> let's go, what the fuck is this, let's go, Ooh. yes, yes, I can't believe it, I can't believe it, it's real, I can't fucking believe it, Fucking god damn it, if I press C it dashes. I can't do it if I'm not pausing the game. <laughs> Ui! Ah! Run, run, run! Avoid enemies! What's your problem? Ah, fuck! This is what I meant? Go in, Salpo! Go in! Why me? Go, go! Go, go! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem! We are fucked! <laughs> Oh! Oh, it is. He she heals, yeah. Fuck this. No, oh. so Oh. Uh, she heals. Okay. A Drago Magico Visuto in Riva oh, al Mare. Isiel Divertito nel Nibia. O Tunale in Una Terra. Chiamata. Honali La piccola Jackie Peppa <laughs> Adorava quel mazzolno I... Del poof El ghi portava fili E sera sera E alta costa Quanto sios You think amazing, you sound exactly like the You can go to the grace Let's Which go. Christ? Yes. Oh. Come this way. Get on the elevator. I don't see any elevator. What the fuck? <laughs> what? what the fuck? <laughs> 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 okay, I'm back. Hello. Uh, okay. Probably gonna read the last chapter for today. Uh, also because if we finish this. I will probably be uh we already like be at halfway through everything I've written, so I don't feel like I want to do it all in one go because it's a long read. I also kept on changing formatting from uh chapter to chapter because there was a lot of time in between. But I think I found a good one with this one. Okay, chapter three, Fireflies. It's been a while since Ark mo got moved in against his will, but there has not been much difference between before and after that. The only new information was the name of their race, the Zodiacs. Creatures inspired by the Zodiac, uh, from the Zodiac sign and turned human using their real world representation and used as pets in a luxury cage. Even with their complete understanding of their surroundings, they are unable to find a way out that time bubble. Born from gods, slaves at their, slaves at their mercy. Redith is usual to stand on the background during the night, watching the city from afar. She always notices the same window, windows turning on and off at the same, in the same moments of the night. She analyzes the rhythm, trying to find a clue on how an exit might work. As one of them, as one of the many tests to see if she's if to see if there's some hope, but there's not a single hint. It's just the same pattern over and over without a meaning. She found it relaxing though. 
there is a comfort in a routine. And looking at all those lights during the night, uh, waiting for them to turn off to look at the stars with close to no pollution, what usually happens is a spectacle of nebulas and small lights around and a black canvas all around. She studied constellations too, and she found all of them during the years, looking for clues on what she was. One night, Ark noticed her there, with her arms on the rail and the back curved looking forward as at the faraway buildings. With, no, with close to no respect for privacy, he just joined her, almost mimicking her position. What are you up to? He asked get, while getting in position. Silence. Oh, come on, you can't tell me. I'm waiting. For what? For the stars to appear. The light started to turn off at this hour. Ark looked up, noticing a very, very small amount of feeble stars in the sky, in the dark sky. You think it's going to be beautiful? I never thought of. It's comforting. And I have no doubts. There can be doubts. Ark nods. The stars will come out. They always do. After a short period of time that seemed to last hours, all the city lights started to turn off, to slowly reveal something similar to the Milky Way, with many colors painting the night sky that usually appears so dark. A spectacle so rare, almost unique, that amazed Ark, that never really thought about it, thought of it until that moment. No. I'm not going to listen to this while I read this. Okay. I remember it. I saw it when I was still Ram. I forgot about it until now. But it was not as beautiful as this time. Ark caresses his hair to the side, probably trying to feel again the horns that he used to have. You know, a bit of nostalgic, you know. I used to see it every night. And it was even better than this. In the desert, there are no, no cities for kilometers and kilometers. The, the sky was always clear, and you could clearly see all the lights up there. Relith said, as she was still admiring the night sky with her usual neutral expression. Wow, oh, I'm sorry. I'm bit, I, I said that, I'm a bit eepy. It's the first time you talk about your past. It's because I don't remember much. It was just sand everywhere. Our wild memories melt together. Melt together. How was it though? Fun, pleasant, did enjoy the weather. I did not like it at all. After an awkward silence, Ark distracts his eyes from the sky to look at Relith, and he he noticed she was looking down below instead of up. Are you tired of looking at that beauty? Relith ignored him. She had small lights reflected in her eyes. Curious. 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 He looked where she was looking. Fireflies? Not that far, not, not that far from where the limits of the cage were, a group of fireflies were floating around in a bunch of bushes. They always come out during the night. Do you like looking at them? They remind me of the stars, but they are closer and you can touch them. You managed, do you ever manage to touch one? Honestly, I never managed to catch one to see up close, to see them, them up close. Hello, Dumar. We are doing some lore reading. Actually, going above the uh, the text limit I put myself, because, you know, I kind of like it. We're in chapter three right now, out of six, so far. Hope you're doing fine, though. Have a good night. I hope you're having a good day. I used to kill them to eat them. She's talking about fireflies. So what are we waiting for? Huh? Ark grabs her hand and pulls her in the house with a smile on his face. Hey, what are you doing? We are going. Going where? Somewhere you're gonna like. Basically, uh, uh, it's, it's like a night. Uh, during the night, they, 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 they're like lights and stuff. And the... The place always like the, the place they live in always resets 
This is where my character lives in. Every 24 hours or so. And uh, basically, now it's night time. And they notice there are some fireflies. And they want to catch them. They walked out of the house and slowly approached the group of flies. A big hedge was covering the bugs, but their light made them easy enough to spot. We need to get closer, Ark whispered while entering the hedge. Relith, kind of hesitant, kind, still kind of hesitant, was trying to peek to see Ark through the branches, and as she got very close, Ark's hand popped out, scaring her, gesturing in a way of saying, Come closer. Annoyed, she slowly entered the bushes and started following him. Ah, okay. After a bit of slowly walking through the leaves and twigs, Hark stopped on his tracks. What now? Reddit said, not knowing what was happening. We are here. Look! Ark slightly moved out of the way in order to make the least noise possible to reveal a whole bunch of bushes in the inner part of the hedge. Swarming fireflies. Oh my god. I, I, I'm... I'm I, I can't stop uh, yawning, goddammit. Because it's also getting darker and darker. Because I think it's going to rain later, so... But I'm probably going to close stream after this. Like, I have no idea on what to play even. Okay. Ready to faintly gasp, we're looking at that spectacle. We need to catch one of them. Ark also getting ready to go on the hunt. No, this is enough. She tried to stop him comf comforting, confronting saying, I don't think this is English, a comf comforting saying that he did not have to go that far. Nah, -uh. we are here now, might as well go deep in it. Oh, fine. What's the plan? Relic accepted the unwanted events, not without complaining, as per usual. It's easy. Just let me do just let me do the work. You know how to do it. Rams are peaceful animals. We don't normally care about insects, but I always made sure to not kill any. Okay. I mean I let the big one out. No. Okay. Okay. We don't normally care about insects, but I always made sure to not kill any while walking around or eating. I got weird looks from the rest of the herd, but I made, but it made me feel good with myself. Also, I don't like the taste of, of them, so another good reason to avoid them. So it's a yes. Yes, I think I can catch a firefly. I think I know how to catch a firefly. Okay, I want to see. Reddit said with a Reddit said with a light smirk on her face. She knows this is gonna be good. Also, this is too happy. Okay, fine. Ark stealthily scouted the surrounding, looking for a decently sized mass of fireflies close together. There we go, he whispered as he locked his sight on the target. The trick is to aim at the center of the group and uh, jump! Ark jumped forward towards a small swarm with his hand with his hands forward. Like I, I should write like straight in front of him. All the fireflies around got scared and immediately flew away far from him. He almost face planted on the ground after the jump, and as he had his hands closed as a clear as a clam. Relith just did a smug smile and shrugged. I knew it was useless. I told you, she said without raising her voice too much. Ark tried to speak with all his face buried in the mud. I got one. What? Ark, a bit in pain from the fall, turned around while still on the grass to slowly reveal his hands where, from, the, from where a dim light was trying to escape. You, you actually managed to catch one? For once, Seth actually had a hint of surprised expression on her face. I told you, I'm a professional. Ark exclaimed, proud of his result. 
After a short, a short exchange of stares, Ark sat on the ground with his hand still closed and slowly moved them towards Relith. You wanna see it? Yeah. Relith said as she was getting closer. Ark waited for her to get close enough to, to his hands, keeping a slight smile on his face. Okay. Here we go. Ark gently opened his hands to reveal not one, but two fireflies that were walking on his skin, confused and emanating a strong light enough to clearly light the zodiac's faces. Up close, they looked like normal fireflies, nothing special about them, but Reddit was enchanted by the light that she always saw so close yet so far from her. Not a single word was spoken, but the look on her face said it all. She was lost in that beauty. Ark faintly broke the silence. Do you have any other wishes? But Reddit, Reddit just stood there silently, completely lost in the light emitted by the bugs. Ark shrugged it off. Like, eh. I, I, it's fine. Man, the, the fact that there's, there's not much light outside now is making me very hippie. They stayed like this for, for some seconds before the fireflies took their leave. So, how was it? It was... beautiful, isn't it? I wouldn't say beautiful, but it was enjoyable. Hiding behind cold words, Lilith didn't want to express a real feeling, and not because she didn't want to. Can we go home now? You don't like being here, surrounded by nature? I prefer to be in, in, my, in a comfy place, if you don't mind. You can stay here if you want. She said as she started to head back. I will reach you shortly. I like I like it here. It reminds me of my old times. Weird, though. She mumbled and continued her walk back. As she closed the main door behind her, she started humming a bit, like she felt genuinely glad for once in a long time. They did not hide any clue behind the light, but it was cute. Shortly after, she, sto she stopped on the carpet close to the entrance. She, like, she stopped on top of the carpet. I wonder, she thought. Ark opened the door and found her standing in the entrance. Hey, are you okay? The sea. Huh? There is no sea close to here. I, I, I plan on seeing it once we get out of here. That's new for me. Doesn't the sand annoy you? You mentioned you don't like the desert. Nope. Nope. Changing the music. Okay. Doesn't the sand annoy you? You mentioned you don't like the desert. Then the ocean. I want to see the ocean at least once. Ark stood there, thinking about it for a couple of seconds, then started stretching the back of his head while moving closer to her. I'm sure we'll find a way. As he starts to rub Reddit's head. That started, that started to annoy her. Don't... Hey! I can help it, you're cute! Reddit slapped his hand away after the compliment. Yeah, I told you, just, she's extremely tsundere, okay? She's a big, big, big... Sundere energy. Just because I opened myself to you once doesn't mean we are friends, okay? Oh, okay. We are still in a prison. We are not in a cheerful situation. I appreciate trying that you are trying to help. I really do. But we need to focus and find a way out. But how? We haven't. We have been thinking about it for a long time now. Reddit lowered her eyes at that sentence. He was, once again, right. They were stuck there and without a clue on what to do. It's getting late, Reddit pointed out. We should head to bed. That sounds good. I will, go, I will get to my room shortly. I won't stay up for too long still. Hmm. Good night. Reddit went up the stairs, taking heavy steps. 
As she reached the room, she could hear Hark mumbling downstairs. She could hear some words here and there, like, what, blah, 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 incomprehensible. Something like, what am I doing wrong? She felt bad for scolding him, but she couldn't stand it. his too friendly approach. She still can decide if his friend trapped with her or foe distracting a distraction to deviate her from her goal. But she's not being rude because she wants to. I will apologize tomorrow. After turning on the lights in the room, she noticed a peculiar small package on the table in front of her bed. It was decorated with, the, with what looked like a uh, gift, ribbon and wrapping, wrapping paper. It indeed looked like, looked like a present, but she couldn't understand. As far as she knew, Ark never entered the room to her knowledge, and no one else could enter the mansion, so this was supposed to come from him. She probably didn't notice him at all. Curious, she decided to check if it was emitting some sounds, or it was silent, so she checked the weight. Uh, okay, no, no, never mind. She checked it if it was emitting some sounds, but it was silent, so she checked the weight, and it was pretty light. It seemed like a real present. She then decided to open it. Entering a girl's room. She needs to learn his manners. Inside, she found two scorpion sting shaped earrings with a green gem in the middle representing the poison inside it. She stood there, admiring them in awe. A tear of sweetness ran on her cheek. And that's the end of chapter 3. And that was it. This is the... the that was the end of... Uh, of chapter 3. Slowly building the... You no. Know, slowly building the characters here and there. Um, I don't dislike the chapters, even though I think I could format some phrases better. Because I feel like the sentences sometimes are a bit confusing. Like I need to write who's who's right who's talking when because I had some struggle at the beginning. But yeah, that was the low reading stream, which is probably gonna be the end of it for now, because I don't, uh, you know, keep reading this will be very long and I don't want to te to to become like tedious. Also, it's something for later. Uh, from now on, chapters are going to be like less heavy on uh, uh, thematics and stuff. So it's next time we'll read, if we read, it's going to be way better. Uh, if there's no one else here around, uh, I think I might call it a day. Because I feel like I... You know, I've done what I could. I've done what I did. Uh... Hope it was uh, relaxing, not too depressing, and hope you guys had fun, and whatever. If I don't know who's doing something, I don't know who's, who could be a raid target. Uh, but I don't know, someone wants to play something, maybe, for an hour or so? I could play League. I said it. League or, or heroes, depending on the person and the request. Otherwise, I'm just going to on the stream and look for raid targets. We look for raid targets in the meantime, in case. Hmm. Okay, I see someone who's. Playing Lies of P. Salpo, you scared the shit out of me. Because uh, I, have, I have your, your Twitch page open. <laughs> you screamed in my ears. Uh, honestly, I have no clue. I only have one possible target, which is Naki. So I guess I'm going to raid Naki. Thank you so much, guys, for hanging out. Hope you guys had fun or a chill time, whatever. Hope you I didn't I didn't made you depressed with the awful uh, uh, narration, awful narration and awful story, because I know it can be, it might have been a bit heavy. But yeah, 
Uh, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out. Thank you so much for lurking as well, talking in general, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be Nicky. Raid, raid one, raid two, raid three, as per usual. Probably gonna hang out a bit before doing something else. And yeah, see you guys this Saturday. Uh, we're gonna play a community game. I was talking about, I was thinking about Fall Guys, but maybe, um, maybe we'll play golf, which is more. Uh, it's more of a community game than Gartic or... No, you're coming at the ending? Yeah. I'm sorry, Sugar. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can cover the, the, the stream. Or just, if you know. If you, know. You, can, you can check my link tree. There's the, the lower there. Uh... But yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. Thank you so much for... Uh, to the cartoon legend for the follow. I don't know what you want. Okay. Of, of, of course, it's not going to have the, the music, but put something depressing in the background for the, the first two chapters. I need Bobby Lore. <laughs> um, and yeah. See you on Naki side and see you Saturday for golf. If you guys want to hang out, it's going to be the same time as today. So 4 p.m. Central European time. It's going to be a summer time. And yeah. Have a great one. Bye.